drilling to be done. This is very, very hard stuff to drill through because it's chrome molly 4130 steel. Yeah. Go oil. Oh dear. Too much smoke. Too hot. I should have been pushing harder. What's happened is I've completely knackered this drill now, but worse than that, I've also knackered this bushing because the heat generated has now tempered this and it is as hard as anything. And this will not cut through it and neither will a brand new drill. So I've got to sort out this hole with some oxyacetylene, heat it up, let it cool down, normalise it, we can drill it again, which we'll do later on. Is there only one place for this drill? The bin. Now, I'll drill the ones at the back then. Rolex. There we go, that was easier, wasn't it? I think I've got the wrong size drill. You know, I was very disappointed about the fact that I'd messed up this bushing, but there's a good side to this because I now get to play with oxyacetylene. Oh, yes! Thanks very much, Dave. You can go now. Thanks, Dave. Go, <laughs> go, go. Anyway, that's sorted, and uh, I'm ready for a bit of drilling when that's cooled down. Finally, all the holes are drilled, so we can now put the airframe, thanks for a bit more help from Dave, onto the landing gear without knocking the landing gear out of level. It just sits on the rear landing gear like that and then should drop down. Thanks, Dave. Pull like that. Now, the airframe itself bolts onto the landing gear in four places. At the front, the bushings that I had to drill and do the oxyacetylene with, it'll bolt through there. And at the rear, it bolts through this plate here onto this bracket that's welded onto the landing gear itself. It's very important that when this is attached and this bolt is put through this hole and it's all bored out, that these don't make contact because otherwise that's going to put a major stress line on the landing gear. So this will actually have to sit slightly higher, something like about that. Both sides have got to be drilled through and bolted, but I've got to make absolutely sure that up here this cross member is completely and utterly level. I wonder what this is for. The tail boom is made of aluminium. It's incredibly light, but very, very strong, thanks to the fact that inside here are four bulkheads connected by stringers. What I've got to do with this is attach it to the airframe with three major adjustments. One is to get it absolutely in the dead centre line of the ship, for obvious reasons. The second is to get it at the right angle to the horizontal. And the third thing is to rotate it so it's in exactly the right position to fix it to the brackets that attach it to the airframe. So, first job is to get the little end over that little notch in that wooden contraption over there. Yes, that's what it's for. Yeah, have I missed one? Oops. <laughs> that's all right, just check the wrong side. Up there and there. It's quite fiddly, I tell you. That is looking something like that. There's lots of adjustments that are required here. That's fine, that's not going anywhere. The next job is to set up my centre line that lines up with the plumb bob at the front of the airframe and the plumb bob here. The plumb bob at the front there is bang in the middle of the front of the airframe. My second plumb bob is here at the back of the airframe. 
what I've done is measured across the tube here and then put a mark so I know the plumb bob's hanging in exactly the middle. So that's that one. This string marks the centre line of the aircraft, but the tail boom plumb bob here is way over to the pilot side. What I need to do is simply slide the tail boom over until the bob is right over the string. And there we go. Fantastic. So that means now the centre line of the tail boom is in line with the centre line of the airframe. So the next job is to check the angle of the tail boom. The boom itself needs to be two and a half degrees further away from horizontal than the square section tubes on the airframe. They were at four and a half degrees, so four and a half plus two and a half is seven. So this needs to be seven degrees. It is currently 7.6 degrees. I'm gonna take it off, otherwise it'll fall off. And very carefully, just need to drop this down and just keep checking it. Two. Bang on. So now that I'm happy with the horizontal plane and the vertical plane of the tail boom, the next is to get it twisted into the right orientation so that when the tail rotor is put on, it's in precisely the right position. The way to do that is in this bulkhead here, this hole marks top dead centre of the tail boom and the one down here is bottom dead centre. So you go and find a couple of drills you've broken. <laughs> plonk one in there, plonk t'other at the top, like so. Let's see what we're at at the moment, 87.5, which means I've got to rotate it that way. Bang on, 90. Superb stuff. Now, I've got to repeat exactly the same procedure with the bulkhead right at the end of the tail boom, and then go around the whole lot and make sure everything's right before I can start drilling. The airframe, which I'd pre-assembled, has been stripped and powder coated and this gives it a finish which is much harder much more resistant to chemical and other general abuse than a straight paint finish it looks superb but the whole thing's been put back together again including the tail boom which is down this end the object of the exercise is to put on at the end of the tail boom the tail rotor plus all the fins and bits and pieces that will stabilize this end of the helicopter when you're in flight. The reason you have a tail rotor is because when you've got a huge chopper blade going around to give you your lift and your movement backwards, forwards, sideways and whatever, there's a tendency for the body of the helicopter to spin in the opposite direction. But it's the tail rotor that actually creates some thrust to bring it all back in line. First job is some horizontal winglets. This is a winglet, it's one of two, but it needs to be attached to a horizontal trim fin, which is this bit. And you can see we've already done quite a lot of the preparation work here because this is all lined up. We've got the holes to be able to screw the two together, but the thing that's going to join the two together is actually a piece of wood. It starts off as a wooden block, like so. Now, to mark that up, to make it exactly the right shape of the end of this horizontal trim, we need to put in a little bit of tubing, which is exactly the same size as the spar that runs through the horizontal trim fin. Place it at the end, then clamp it with a clamp, and all that does is just squash down the aluminium so that it's exactly the same shape and profile all the way along the horizontal trim fin. So then it's a simple matter of place the upturned trim fin on the block of wood, like so, and then draw around it. There we go. That, that, that. Yeah. This is a bandsaw, a bit of kit that I'm not that experienced with, so this should be very entertaining. Fortunately, I've got lots of bits of wood, and a reasonable amount of time. So, where's it switch on? Down here. Wish me luck. Okay, now. With that all screwed up, that side as well, got to put two more screws in there, but once that's completely finished, what I'll then do is lay over 
two pieces of fiberglass tape like that over the screws. Then it's a matter of attaching them to the tail boom. <laughs>